This is Dino Paul Crocetti. The world knows him as Dean Martin. Dino Crocetti was born on the 7th day of June, 1917, in Steubenville, Ohio. His parents, Gaetano and Angela Crocetti, were Italian immigrants. Dino had one older brother, William Alfonso, born in 1916, they called Bill. Now this is a picture of Dean Martin and his parents years later. The Crocettis only spoke Italian at home, and young Dino didn't learn to speak English until he started elementary school. He said that the kids often made fun of his broken English, and he was self-conscious for years of the way he spoke. Dean once said that he was very proud of his Italian heritage. That's who I am, he said. Dino and Bill attended Grant Elementary School. They were always neatly dressed and well cared for as their dad made a good living as a barber. The brothers attended Steubenville High School and by the 10th grade, Dino had decided that he knew as much as his teachers did, so he quit school to go to work. He tried several menial jobs before becoming a stock boy in a tobacco store. Now the store turned out to be a front for illegal gambling activities in the rear. Dino quickly became involved in the backroom activities, anything to make money. He even tried boxing as a welterweight, making anywhere from 10 to $25 a bout. He was so poor, he said, that he couldn't even afford the tape to wrap his hands in and busted up his knuckles. Dean said he fought 12 bouts and won all of them, except 11. In reality, of course, he actually won more fights than he lost but telling the truth was not near as funny. While hanging around nightclubs with friends, he discovered that he could sing. His friends would encourage him to sing for them after hours, and he soon began singing with local bands that were close to home. At 17, he was singing with the Ernie McKay Orchestra, but he was soon spotted by Cleveland Orchestra leader Sammy Watkins. While touring with the Sammy Watkins Band during 1938 through 1940, he was going by the name of Dino Martini. It's been said that it was Sammy Watkins that suggested the name Dean Martin. While singing with the Sammy Watkins Orchestra, Dean meets Elizabeth Ann McDonald. Everybody called her Betty. They soon fell in love and married on the 2nd of October, 1941. Soon after their marriage, Dean received his draft notice. He served a year stateside before being assigned 4F because of a double hernia he received believed as a child. He immediately went back on the road with the Sammy Watkins band. Dean was hardly ever at home always on the road, and spent most of his money that he made partying. On June the 29th, 1942, a year after their marriage, their first child, Stephen Craig Martin, was born. The next year in 1943, Dean got an offer to play the famous Rio Bamba Room in Manhattan. He was replacing Frank Sinatra, who had canceled his engagement. Now, this was the first time that Dean had met his lifelong friend-to-be, Frank Sinatra. Martin was now making good money and sent for Betty and his son Craig to come and join him in New York. The next year, March 16, 1944, Betty and Dean had a daughter, Claudia Dean Martin. That same year, Dean will meet a new comic by the name of Joey Levitz, who was going by the name of Jerry Lewis. 
They happened to meet in a coffee shop at the Belmont Plaza Hotel and liked each other immediately. And they actually become friends, but they never even thought about performing together. One was a singer and the other was a comic. Two years later, both by coincidence, was playing at the Havana Madrid Club in New York. It was the first time that they had tried a routine together. Dean would sing and Jerry would heckle him. The audience loved it. But still, they continued performing separately. A few months later, Jerry persuaded Skinny D'Amato, who ran the 500 Club in Atlantic City, to give his friend Dean a change. Together, they were great. 19-year-old Jerry Lewis said of the 29-year-old Dean Martin that he was the spine and strength of what Martin and Lewis was, even though he said, I got all the credit. Now by this time, Dean and Betty's third child, Barbara Gale, was born on April the 11th, 1945. Even though Dean was making money, he was still spending most of it partying. Betty had finally had enough of New York and Dean never being at home. She had already moved back to her parents and then later on to his parents' home. In 1947, the act of Martin and Lewis was fast becoming the most successful dual act in show business history. On 19 August 1948, Dean and Betty will have their fourth child, Dina. She was one year old when Dean and Betty divorced after eight years of marriage. Betty had learned that Dean was involved with 22-year-old Orange Bowl queen and model Dorothy Jean Biggers, everyone called Jeannie. They were married September the 1st, 1949 at a friend's home with Jerry Lewis serving as best man. Jerry will say years later that Jeannie was the best thing that ever happened to Dean Martin, except for me, of course. After Betty's divorce from Dean, the once beautiful high school athlete, who had been a wonderful mother to their four children, began to withdraw and drink more. During the next few years, the children began to suffer without support of a stable family. Dean will be busy with his career and new family. And between 1949 and 1956, Martin and Lewis will star in 16 films, numerous television appearances, and nightclub acts. The money that Dean was sending Betty each month for her and their children, she was going through and moving place to place. She became so unstable that Martin filed for custody and the three girls moved in with Dean and Jeannie. Craig was living with his grandparents at the time. In the meantime, Jeannie and Dean had three children. Dean Paul, born November the 17th, 1951. Ricky James, born September the 20th, 1953. And Gina Caroline, born December the 20th, 1956. Jeannie became their surrogate mother, taking care of Dean's seven children. Betty Martin will become more or less a recluse over the years and will quietly pass away at her San Francisco home in June 1989 at the age of 66. Her ashes will be scattered over the San Francisco Bay. She will never remarry. On July the 24th, 1956, after 10 years performing together, the most successful duo, Martin and Lewis, called it quits at the Copacabana nightclub in New York City. There are lots of reasons for the breakup. For one, Jerry and his wife Patty were very close friends with Dean's first wife, Betty. That didn't help. Whatever the reasons for the two parting, they both left with hard feelings. It's been said the two will not speak for 20 years. However, in 1960, four years after the breakup, 
Both were performing their separate acts at the Sands Hotel in Las Vegas when Jerry caught the tail end of Dean's act. Dean invited him on stage and they joked around for about 15 minutes. In 1976, Martin made a surprise appearance set up by Frank Sinatra on Jerry Lewis's annual Labor Day telethon for muscular dystrophy. Lewis said they had more money donated that day than they ever had, and they renewed their friendship. After the Martin and Lewis breakup, Dean began recording with Capitol Records, and in 1958, he starred with Marlon Brando, Hope Lang, and Montgomery Cliff. Now, Cliff tried to help Dean during the making of The Young Lions, so much so that he never forgot. And when Martin was filming the Matt Helm series in 1966, he insisted there be a part for Montgomery Clift, when no producer wanted Cliff because of his drug habits. Unfortunately, Montgomery Cliff passed away before filming started. After the Young Lions, Martin starred with friend John Wayne and Ricky Nelson in Rio Bravo in 1959. And in 1960, it was Ocean's Eleven, filmed in Las Vegas, that started his association with the Rat Pack, Frank Sinatra, Sammy Davis Jr., Peter Lawford, and Joey Bishop. The Rat Pack hit Las Vegas by storm. Their nightclub act was sold out every night, and their wild partying would usually continue until dawn. Dean would usually excuse himself to his bedroom as he loved golf so much he had to get to the golf course early. The Vegas Rat Pack Act will last until 1965. In 1965, Dean will star on his own NBC television show, The Dean Martin Show, and it'll run for nine years until 1974. His theme song was Martin's hit record in 1964, Everybody Loves Somebody Sometime. Initially, Dean didn't want to do the show. He wanted to continue making movies and doing nightclub acts. He requested an outrageous fee, and he said he didn't want to rehearse. To his surprise, they accepted. He never knew who his guest star was going to be until he opened the door. It was as much of a surprise to Dean as it was to his audience. The show was a major hit. Although Dean pretended to be intoxicated on each show, most of the time it was apple juice and not whiskey. Although he was at the top of his career at that time, things were not going well at home. As his daughter Dina said in her book, Memories are made of this, that Dean Martin was not a very good father, but he was a good man, and in his world, that's what counted. Now, this is a picture of Dino on the left, Ricky, Dina, Jeannie, Gina, Dean, Gail, Claudia, and Craig, and more happier times at their home at 601 Mountain Drive, Beverly Hills. In the fourth year of the Dean Martin Show, on December the 10th, 1969, Jeannie announced their separation. However, it'll be 1972 before the 23-year marriage will officially end. Jeannie will continue to raise their youngest child, Gina, and will never remarry. Although she will remain close to Dean's friends, such as Frank Sinatra's wife, Barbara. The next year after Jeannie and Dean divorced, he will marry Catherine Hahn on the 25th of April, 1973. Dean was 55 and Catherine was 26. Catherine was a model and a hair salon receptionist. She was introduced to Dean by his manager. The next year, in 1974, after marrying Catherine, the Dean Martin Show will close. 
He was one of the highest paid entertainers in Hollywood. Dean was by no means ready to retire. As the Dean Martin show was closing, he was starting the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast, and it will continue as one of the most successful shows on television for 10 years, ending in 1984. Again, Martin will become restless and file for divorce from his third wife, Catherine, after only three years of marriage in 1976. He will adopt Catherine's six-year-old daughter, Sasha. His settlement with Catherine will never be disclosed. And it seems that all of Dean's wives gave him love, and he gave them money. In 1987, at the age of 69, Dean Martin will receive the worst news that a parent can receive, the death of a child. One of his sons, Dean Paul Jr., Dino, had crashed his California National Guard F-4 Phantom Jet on a routine training mission. Flying with Captain Martin was his weapons systems officer, Raymond Ortez. They had departed March Air Force Base and crashed into the San Bernardino Mountains during a snowstorm. Dino was 35 years old. At the age of 13, Dino had joined Desi Arnaz Jr. and Billy Hinkle to form the band Dino, Desi, and Billy. He had become an actor and was nominated for a Golden Globe for Best Male New Star of the Year. In 1971, Dean Paul married actress Olivia Hussey. And in 1973, they will have one child, Alexander. The two will divorce in 1978. Four years later, in 1982, he will marry Olympic gold medalist ice skater Dorothy Hamill. They were divorced two years later in 1984. As Dean Martin, Jeannie, and family waited for word from the crash site, they held on to hope that their son would survive. It took five days before the bodies were located in the four foot of snow. Friends such as Frank Sinatra said that Dean never recovered from his son's death. Dean told friends that he would never heal and that he was just walking through life. Dean Paul Jr. was buried in the Veterans National Cemetery in Los Angeles. During Dean Paul's funeral, Dean learned later that Jerry Lewis had attended the funeral without anybody knowing. Dean was so touched that he called Jerry and they spoke one or two times a week after that. It cemented their relationship. The next year in 1988, one year after Dean Paul's death, Frank Sinatra asked Dean if he would be willing to go on a 26 city tour in order to help their friend Sammy Davis Jr. make some money that was badly needed. He agreed, but left after six performances. He was having trouble concentrating on his lines and forgetting song lyrics. After an argument with Frank, he went to an L.A. hospital having kidney troubles. Dean said that Frank donated him a kidney. He just didn't know whose kidney it was. Now, Liza Minnelli continued the tour with Frank and Sammy in Dean's place. Sammy Davis Jr. will die two years later in 1990 of throat cancer. Although Jeannie and Dean will not remarry, they'll become very close after Dean Paul's death. Martin will curtail his personal appearances and abide his time watching old westerns on TV and going to the same restaurant at night and ordering the same food. But mostly, he'd play golf. In September 1993, he was diagnosed with lung cancer at a Los Angeles medical center. He was told only an operation could prolong his life. He refused the operation. He had already took care of business. 
He had joined Sammy Davis's 60th anniversary celebration that aired only a few weeks before Sammy's death. And in 1990 at the Bally Hotel in Las Vegas, he had his final reunion with Jerry Lewis. In December of 1990, he had congratulated Frank Sinatra on his 75th birthday special. Dean Martin will pass away at his Beverly Hills home at 3.30 a.m. Christmas Day, 1995, from respiratory failure complications of lung cancer. His second wife, Jeannie, will leave her annual Christmas party and rush to his bedside from her home just down the street. She stated she laid by his side and held his hand until they come to take him. She had kept the same vigil 28 years earlier in 1967 with Dean's mother, Angela, passed away of bone cancer. The funeral of Dean Martin will be held on the 28th, and he will be interred in a crypt at the Westwood Village Memorial Park. All his friends will be there. Jerry Lewis will speak, and Rosemary Clooney will sing Everybody loves somebody sometime. The words will be engraved on his tomb. Dean Martin has three stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Dino Paul Crocetti, Dean Martin, was 78 years old. The lights of Las Vegas were dim in his honor. Six years after her father's death, Claudia, Dean and Betty's second child will pass away on March the 16th, 2001, from breast cancer. She followed her dad into the acting business. In 1956, at age 11, she was in her dad's movie, Hollywood or Bust. In 1964, it was for those who think young. And several others, including numerous television shows such as My Three Sons, and the Donna Reed Show. She married twice, first to actor Kyle Martin, with whom she had a daughter named Jessie. She later married Jim Roberts and moved to Reno, Nevada, where they owned a printing shop. Claudia was 56 years old. In August 2016, the youngest son of Dean and Jeannie, Ricky James Martin, passed away at his home in Woodland, Utah. Ricky had followed his father's footsteps also, and he was a talented singer and entertainer in his own right, working shows in Las Vegas and touring the world. Ricky married Annie Rasmussen in the 1990s, and she gave him three daughters, Pepper, Montana, and Rio. Ricky's death was a sudden shock to the family. His death is believed to have been from a blood clot. It could have been from a fall that he had took earlier in the year. Ricky Martin was 62 years old. And three weeks after Ricky's death, the family was in for another shock when they learned that their mother, Jeannie, had passed away on the 24th of August, 2016, after a long battle with cancer. Jeannie was 89 years old. She once said that she first seen Dean Martin at a New Year's Eve party at the Beachcombers Club in Miami. Jerry Lewis and Dean were performing. When she said their eyes met, it was love at first sight. Craig, Barbara Gale, Dina, Jeannie, and even Sasha all followed their famous father into show business. All of his children have different memories of their father. Dina, in her book, Memories Are Made of This, seems to be an honest account of her life growing up around famous friends of her father, both good and bad. The remarkable thing about all Dean Martin's children is that they strive to keep his memory and legacy alive, not realizing that it's not the wonderful songs that he sang, nor the 60-something movies he was in, 
nor the famous Las Vegas nightclub acts, nor even the thousands of fans that adored him. The real legacy that Dean Martin left is the love his children have for him, the ones that knew him best.